Welcome, everybody, to the next edition of Bats and Stats. I'm here, as always, Brian, and my compadre, as always, Ross, and we have a super-duper exciting guest, Taylor Case, <laughs> with the Dynasty Gurus. Like, I'm pretty excited, and this is going to be a really, really fun podcast. Taylor, please, man, introduce yourself. Give me some <laughs> so, some sort of riveting experience that you have with fantasy give me something anything riveting experienced a riveting experience with fantasy huh hmm. or, or with yeah. fantasy baseball I, I guess oh I yeah this fantasy baseball you want to hear about my riveting <laughs> yeah, fantasy narrow it down yeah i was like yeah that was a hard right turn right there right out of the gate i love that uh, riveting experiences man i mean this is a fun uh goofy game that we all play i mean um I don't know. I don't know that I have any riveting experiences. I've won some leagues in the last couple of years. I've lost more than I've won, but I think we're probably all in the same boat in, the, in that case. So thanks. I still think I'm pretty good at this. Um, leading a good group here at TDG. Um, I don't have a whole lot. I mean, I, I'm, I'm still like, I'm racking my brain for a riveting fantasy experience. Um, well, That's what I'm here for. I, I, I want to I make everybody just like, being are, on this are, pod, are you, does that count as a riveting fantasy experience? Being on this, this is it. podcast, bats yeah, stats. you've made it if you're on <laughs> bats and stats. Yeah, yeah. Like no, that. I mean, we're we're thrilled to have you because we're pretty. This is brand new, right? We we just got this launched over the the off season, and and we're learning a lot about how to better make a podcast. And you've got a lot of experience with this. I've been saying this for a long time, Taylor. You have the radio voice, man. <laughs> yeah, sure. we're thank born you. for podcasting or radio or something thank you no that uh, it helps that i've had a bit of a cold i was telling you guys beforehand i've got this kind of like low rasp to my voice uh in the last past couple of weeks so it kind of gives me this kind of like sexy undertone to it um <laughs> it's which is not really me I, I'm, I just lucked out to be on the pod with that uh, with that extra tone there so but i appreciate you saying that i do uh uh, my voice is right on the uh, edge of being lost. Uh, so if I lose it halfway through, I'll just try to chug half of my, my peach beer over here and I will do my best to get back in it. But uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. Don't, don't spoil things with the, the peach beer, man. We, spoil, uh, that, that's the next that's segment. Just a, that's just a teaser. That's just a <laughs> fantasy teaser. <laughs> yeah, well, we're excited to have you. Uh, just, just to give some context and background, Taylor is the... What do you call it, editor in chief? Uh, you um, called me Kingmaker earlier, and the I kinda, Kingmaker. He I kind of like that. King I'm maker, not gonna lie; right? yeah. that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I managing editor is technically managing um, the title that goes under my uh, name in my emails um, when I do email anything from the Dynasty Guru. But you can call me that. You can call me T. You can call me. Um, my family calls me Tito. I don't know where that came from. Um, friendly di uh, Dynasty da neighborhood dad. That one's been around for a while. Call me whatever you want. I'll I'll play it. I'll if it's in my direction, I'll answer. Yeah. Okay. So managing editor, the Dynasty Guru, for about a year and a half. Get, getting on. Uh, yeah, year. We're coming up on two years, right? No, I I don't I don't know. I think about <laughs> about a year and a half. Yeah, let's say a year and a half. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we go back, we've worked together a lot on different articles that have been published. And so Taylor is just one of the nicest guys that you'll ever meet. And he's a good, good fantasy baseball mind, obviously, too, to be Thank running you. the Dynasty Guru. There's a lot of people involved in that operation. So keeping that thing running straight takes a lot of work. So there's there's there are a lot of people, but there are a lot of people to help. And so you, and, and both of you are not giving yourselves enough credit being writers and having been on join the ranks and doing you know you, you guys do you guys do a shit ton of writing am i allowed to say that oh yeah, yeah. say whatever you want cool. we got no rules no, i'm not gonna I, nothing will be um super weird i know that's gonna freak out ryan when he watches this because i know he doesn't think i he doesn't think i um i cuss <laughs> you have to edit that out because it's gonna freak ryan out um <clears throat> professor ryan um I don't know. You guys are not getting, I mean, you guys do so much work, all of the writers and, and, and everybody podcasts and ranks and Ken and Greg and Chris and, and 
you know, that used and it used to be Shelly and Keaton all, and all of them mm -hmm. too. I mean, everybody, there's, there's so many people. And so it, I, it seems like I do a lot and I'm not going to dissuade anybody from thinking I do a lot because I, I do actually do a lot, but we, I, I have a lot of help too. So I appreciate it guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to do a, a, a shameless plug for the dynasty dynasty guru right now. Yeah, when I first had, uh, you know, kind of started climbing into the, the fantasy baseball thing, that was the only website that I would look at the really? ranking systems. Yeah. It, it, it was the only thing that I would look at. And the, I, I shot out a couple um, articles to Keaton when he was still, you know, bugging around and stuff. Uh, I was trying to get, you know, to be a writer and then finally he gave me the, uh, the, the go ahead and nice. So I am. Very so nice. the <laughs> dynasty guru, guru.com guys, you got to go look at it. it. It should be your first. Well, okay. It, it, it should be your second. <laughs> and then, <laughs> it should be used in unison, right? Because like there you go, two tabs open, right? Yes, yeah, two different paths up the mountain. Yeah. You know, like there's a little yeah. bit. You know, we all do stats at, at TDG too, but we don't. It's not as high powered, I would say. So, yeah. yeah, well, and there's a reason that I got my start at the Dynasty Guru too, for the same reasons that Brian is saying. It was the place that I went to. You know, yeah. So I saw on Twitter one day that they were looking for writers and I was like, you know, maybe, maybe that would be something to do. I love, I love doing the fantasy stuff. I am obsessed with researching this stuff every day. So I might as well see if I can lend a hand somewhere. So that's how it all got started for me too. So yeah. Now we're lucky Excellent. to have both of you. Seriously. Lucky to have Thank both you. of you there. Yeah. When did you start, Ross? Uh, for me, it was in 2019. Okay, so it was right before me. Yeah, yeah so just, before just before this, well, a few months, I think my first article was like in January or February of 2019. So it was a few okay. months before the season started. And that was like all strategy-based. Like, this is how I approach fantasy. You know, that was my first article. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, meanwhile, Jordan's doing all this big brain, like research sort of based articles. And I'm just like, this is my strategy. And I don't know. I guess those two things combined, they they kind of clicked because he liked what I had written. I was interested in what he was writing. So, yeah. Something, something clearly clicked. Clicked, yeah. 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 <laughs> you guys Here are taking are. off. I see. I mean, I see new people. I've been sent out a TDG like Discord invite in, in a week or so, and we've had maybe 10 new people show up. They're not coming for me. I must be coming from you. Yeah. 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 We're, uh, we're doing good. We're, we're growing. I'll, I'll spend a minute maybe just, I don't know, gushing a little bit about the scout, the stat line growth. Cause it, it has been tremendous. I could not be happier with the way things have gone. We went from posting our stuff there just to have like a home for it, somewhere to put it, you know, to kind of trying to, to ramp that up. And we had no designs with this. I, I, I want to make that super clear. We had no designs with any of this stuff we just thought it was cool and helpful for us and we're putting it up there and then we just started updating more frequently more frequently and then this year it's like now we've got articles we got people that are contributing to the website we got a, this podcast you know none of this stuff was ever in my mind it just started happening and so now we're just we're rolling with it and we're growing i mean the twitter presence has has boomed the uh, the website itself for, from a traffic perspective, again, I'm, I'm an obsessed numbers guy. So I'm looking at this stuff all the time. I mean, it's, it's growing remarkably fast. Our membership base is, is growing quite a bit, you know, very cool. It, it's amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. That's very cool. I love it. And it, it gives me an opportunity to turn this into something that's kind of like a community driven, I don't want to say business, but but project is maybe more of an appropriate term. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I would love to do. You know, who doesn't want to do what they love doing all the time. So. No, on the back. Good at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. good at it. Uh, on the back side of that, I would love more people to get onto the discord for the dynasty gurus because that, that discord is a really good time. Yeah. You have up, 
to date thing. Like it, it, there's elbow injuries that come out. I think before the pitcher even gets hurt, <laughs> <laughs> like at this point, it, yeah. it's been insane. Um, it, it, how how does one get onto the Discord? Uh, that's a good question. Um, and I guess guess it's time for me to gush a little bit. And I agree with you. We've had a ton of fun with that. I think it's been a really fun just addition to the community as a, as a whole. Actually, in, a, in an effort to actually create a, a real community, people have been donating to the site for a long time, but there's been no like tangible way to, in a smaller setting, get in touch with gurus. Or, I mean, you could used to be able to just email you know keaton or whoever and he would pass around emails or uh, or on twitter right it's a little more personal this way um so i i i'm still very excited about it 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 gets a little out of control sometimes trying to keep up with everything but i feel like for the most part i mean i've got a couple other people i know ross you i mean both you guys you guys are in there all the time so i appreciate that if i don't i don't tell you guys that enough i appreciate everybody like just getting even if it's just like a finger every once in a while like answering a question here or answering you know when i send out the back calls it's great so how do you get in well you can either donate to the site um and there's going to be a couple cool things showing up in the next couple months i think it'd be worth donating if you haven't yet uh, it's just 15 dollars for the year and you get access to i mean countless lists of rankings all on one enormous spreadsheet um consensus rankings consensus top 200 prospect rankings consensus top 500 rankings and then each position uh as well at you know in the minor leagues and the major leagues so uh those alone are super useful the discord i think has been great you mm-hmm. know for immediate feedback as well i mean the other way you could wait around like maybe once a month i give out a couple you know you guys can write a write a review and sometimes i give out free stuff for that or sometimes i just send out randomly 10 invites just for fun. Uh, so <laughs> that happens every once in a while. If you get lucky, if you're paying around, you know, you're still hanging out on Twitter and paying attention to the Dynasty Guru, I, it's worth following uh, for that every once in a while. I do it at weird hours of the night because I am up. Uh, we were talking about Ryan being up at weird hours of the night. Sometimes I'm up, at weird, I have kids. So sometimes they're <laughs> up at weird hours of the night. Sometimes I'm up doing things because they're asleep. Um, so there's a couple different ways. Um, and I guess you could donate. I mean, the, the other great way to get in, you know, in touch with all that is to donate uh, or to subscribe, I should say, to Scout Statline, right? Because you guys are part of the community as well. So it's a yep. nice partnership as, as well. So lots of lots of ways. I mean, you can either try to get lucky or you can donate, which I what I think what I think and hope is not too much money um, <clears throat> for what I think you're getting back at the very least. And uh, yeah, so lots of ways to get involved. It's it's. I, I'm 100% biased, obviously. Um, I created the damn thing, but it is, <laughs> it has been so far a very, I think, a very big success. I mean, I think so far yeah. we've helped a lot of people through their drafts, through, um, you know, startup drafts, redrafts, uh, yeah. first year player drafts. There's been a ton of discussion. One of the cool things that we started doing was uh, for everybody listening is, when we do our consensus rankings and uh, hint, hint, wink, wink, those are, we might be doing those again mid season, which is going to be a, a ton of fun and totally crazy. It's something I don't have time for, but we're going to do anyway. What we do the first time around is we do like a, a pre round of consensus rankings. And I, then all of us get together and yell at each other and, and debate, you know, in house at, at, you know, the TDG Slack. And then we, we send out an updated one, you know, as well. People add people in, move people up, move people down. I make final decision because I'm in charge and I get to do that. And then you can see where people moved um, relative to their um, kind of a human element because sometimes guys, you know, get lost. Sometimes people, you know, when you're ranking, I mean, in the end, we're all ranking you know, you guys did it with us and you rank 600, 700, 1,000 people at the mm-hmm. end. So you can see, I highlight the guys we've discussed. So we guys that we really honed in on, guys that fell, guys that you know, big risers. And then that's going to be, <clears throat> I know this, that's been a little bit of a topic of discussion, like how worthwhile is it doing rankings, you know, six, five to six months after we last did consensus rankings. But if you've watched any baseball this year, which I assume a lot of you have. <clears throat> I know you guys have. Apologize, keep uh, clearing my throat. It's all right. The stuff is different uh, than it was five or six months ago. The pitch clock is is a thing that has 
<laughs> I don't want to say has changed things, you know, like dramatically for pitchers, but it does feel like for some pitchers, uh, it has changed things dramatically. People are hurt. People have been called up uh, more unexpected. I mean, there's been a thousand pitcher call-ups, right? So um, all that to say, we will likely be doing re-ranking uh, all of our positions um, and a couple of the top 500s as well, as well, maybe prospects. I haven't touched base with, with Ken on the prospects yet. Um, but so that's coming. So hopefully if you guys are interested, it's worth, I mean, it's worth getting in there now to get acquainted with the discord. And then within the next month or two, we will have those for you to help with your trades, you know, around the all-star break. That's awesome. And I, I want to say something about the, the discord as well. I think this is a great idea and it, it felt, it felt like it fit really well with scout the stat line because I felt like there was like a community that was missing and, and I wanted to give that, but I couldn't do it myself. And and Taylor had this great idea of, I mean, the site is called the dynasty guru. There's a presumption that you have experts, you know, and, and what good are experts if you can't actually tap into that resource? Well, the discord <laughs> gives you an opportunity to tap directly into those experts. You know, I, ca I can't a answer every question that comes my way all the time. I try to, I try to get back to everybody. I mean, that's always my goal, of course, but I get a lot of messages these days. And so when I'm unavailable, <laughs> well, I, I have, here's- I see it examples. on Twitter. Yeah, I know. Man. Here's some examples. Like somebody <laughs> reached out to me about a draft pick. You know, I'm I'm working things during my, my regular life too. And if it's a couple hours before I can get back, you know, it's like, it's too late. I can't, I can't say, I can't give that advice of like, well, this is who I would take if that person's already picked, you know, mm -hmm. the dynasty gurus discord is a totally different story because people can get that advice on demand from a group of really smart experts. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of talent that is at the dynasty guru that pitches in on that discord. So I think it's fantastic. Before we get into a lot of good stuff, I want to introduce some some beers. And I, Taylor, I, I'd like you to go first, man, because you did mention a peach beer, and I don't know what a peach beer is. Well, so uh, yeah, there it. I am drinking Mother Earth. Mother Earth, company. very good. They have a very good uh, like vanilla cream ale. This is Cali cream and peaches and cream. And it's very good. I've actually never had a, a full one before. They do an orange cream, which is kind of like, uh, I mean, like an orange cream sickle. It's very, very good. Um, they do it on nitro here in California. It's very California. This is a very California beer, um, <laughs> which is where I, a very San Diego beer, which is where I hail from. Um, and this is peaches and cream. It's it's actually delightful. Um, it was also happened to be the only beer I had in my fridge in the moment. Uh, my <laughs> wife drank the only IPA that we had um, or that we had left the other night. So, um, which is, uh, which is her right. So I'm, <laughs> I've got this peach beer, but I'm, I actually, and I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but I, I really do. It's very good. And I highly recommend it to everyone. Nice. That's good. And what was that name again? Mother Earth? Mother, Mother Earth, Earth Brewing. Mother, Mother Earth. Earth Brewing. Here we go. Peaches and cream. Peaches and cream, got Mother Earth. Man. We got the surfboard. We got yeah. the peaches and cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There That's comes our one. next sponsor. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <here we> go. <laughs> I'm reaching Reach out. out already. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ross, good sir, what do you got? Well, let's see. Now, where's my opener? I know I had it over here. Got everything else. <laughs> Which beer do I want to choose? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here it is. It. Now, okay. Uh, this is going to be a mystery. Can't see this very well, but this is. Oh, that that light is. Yeah, bright. really bright. Hold on. Let's try this. There we go. Okay, no vacancy. Uh, Looks like a wine, man. Treat, the bud is it a cider or something. Tell. So this is what it says about this. Let me get this light back on. It says a wild. Ale brewed with, uh, I'm going to butcher this, retinomysis, aged in oak, <laughs> there, <laughs> followed by re-fermentation over Flathead Valley cherries. Okay, so wow. I, I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even tell you what half of that meant, so. Try it, let us know. I'm it's like you're drinking wine, man. It really is like you're drinking wine. 
Oh, that's very which pinkish. is which is fine. I just I didn't. I love wine. Yeah, I love wine. Well, I think it is aged in. Yeah, I think it said cherry something oak barrels. It's a big beer. Like wine barrels. It's a big, it's a big glass, dude. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Das boot. A das boot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, das cherry boot. So that's five. like a, that's like a, it almost tastes like a sour. I don't think it actually is a sour. Brian, we, we've, we've had La Folie before. This is kind of like that a little bit. It's very, <laughs> it's hard to describe. It, it def definitely has a sourness to it, a little bit of sweetness, but it's not a, not a strong sweetness, more sour. Describe it as if it was a prospect. Oh, it's just it, silky it smooth. 300. Silky, silky smooth swing. It's going to be a superstar. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Very unknown, <laughs> underrated. Got it. So it's like the Jonathan Classe of beers. Is that what we're right. doing here? All right. <laughs> exactly. That's the historical it. comp. Love it. <laughs> All right, I, I I have a very familiar one. I think everybody's yes. probably had this. It shocked top. This was probably my earliest of different beers that wasn't a domestic. Um, I, I think it, a lot of people are going to say shock top. Yeah, that's when I ventured out and tried something different um, on beers. And that's why I bought it tonight. Because I was just like, I haven't had a shock top forever. I, mean, I, I drink these bent nails and different IPAs, and I, I, I want a shock top. It's not as good as I remember. <laughs> well, really, that's because you don't have an orange in it, man. That's true, right? And it <laughs> does. It, it, in there. It, it tastes just like an orange peel. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> I remember the days, early twenties, drinking shock yeah. tops. That was a that was a thing. Yeah, blue moons, shock tops. That was the did always the thing. Hey, let, let, let's oh, go yeah. get one of them. It's yeah, still really good. Don't get me oh, wrong. Shock top. If you want to sponsor us, it's a lot of fruity, uh, a lot of fruit in these beers. <laughs> the peaches, <laughs> yeah. oranges, and cherries, and what was it? Wildflowers, whatever you drinking, Ross? No, it's cherry. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's mostly. <laughs> was it made in a kiln? <laughs> you know they have some barrels on the it's mead here, so it's some kind of, <laughs> i don't know that's pretty wild it's good though you know good i'm good with it <laughs> check it out thirsty street yeah thirsty yeah. street all right nice. okay <laughs> so to, <laughs> before we get too off topic <laughs> let's jump into something that i wanted to um i wanted to share with you guys um I made a few trades the last couple days, and um, wow! Okay, here we go. So we're all looking at the same thing. Is, the same is that time. coming beautiful. through? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I just wasn't okay. expecting it. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I I, I made a few trades um, on Sunday, and I I I talked to a couple league uh, league members. Ross was one of them, and then a friend of mine, Bo and Tyrell. They both said, "Hey, man, you need to go get." some average and you need to go get some on base. So I, I traded Kyle Schwarber, Patrick Wisdom for Zach Eflin, Brian Mata, a second round draft pick, a third round draft pick, Jake Alou and Gavin Stone. Now that was my third trade of the day. Okay. So like after they had say the on base percentage and everything like that, I was like, what, what am I going to do? And how am I going to like make my team better? I should have started with a different trade, but I didn't. Um, so the first trade that I made was I traded for Brandon Nemo and I gave up Joey Weimer, Blade Tidwell, Gunnar Hoagland, Ronnie Mauricio and Owen Miller because of the on-base percentage stuff. The second one I did was yeah. Matt McLean and a second round draft pick for Brian Reynolds. And then I'm really taking advantage of that, that Matt McLean hype. <laughs> I wanted to share these trades with you guys because at, at the end of the day, I, I traded one, two, three, four, five, six, 
I traded six prospects for basically three normal Major MLB years. years. Yeah. And, and I don't want you guys to be afraid to be able to trade prospects to go get MLB years. I, I know that's a lot of the things that we talk about is prospects. I, I know you're always looking for the next best thing, but it's okay to, to let these guys go because we don't know what they're going to be. And you can go ahead and turn and burn them for actual real life MLB years. Can you guys second yeah, that? Like yeah. This, that's been a topic in the discord speaking of, and I am of, you know, I'm a prospect town. There's no doubt about it, but there's, and, and there are some prospects that I will not trade. Like I want. Yeah. Them. Yeah. But those are, that's a very, very small amount. Yeah. For the most part, 99% of them. I'm totally willing to ship, ship them out if I can improve my team and get some pr production. Yeah. I'm absolutely willing to do that. That's different if you're in a rebuild, I think. If you're in the midst of a rebuild, there's no sense in, in shipping them out. There are there are those players, and we have some in the Discord that they're they're out there competing every year. That's a different style than the approach I take. I'm I'm trying to build a team that I know is gonna be absolutely dominant for a stretch. You know, that's my goal. So usually I am I'm pulling in a lot of minor league talent. I'm I'm continuing to churn and burn that talent to try to get better talent. You know, that's always my goal is to to get maximum talent. And I think I've been pretty good at doing that over the years. But if I'm in a competitive window, yeah, I will ship those guys out. Or if I'm trying to make the turn from being, you know, collecting all those assets to being a competitive team. Yeah, absolutely. And Brian, you've seen that in our league. Yep. You know, I went from having all these prospects to practically zero because I was I was like, everybody's gone because I need a relief pitcher or whatever it might be. You know, whatever yeah. the gap was, they're gone because I need to fill that position. And that's what I'm that's what I'm willing to do. Yep. Yeah. What's your thoughts, Taylor? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of valid ways to go about this. I typically fall in line or I fall on the side of drafting even in dynasty drafting to win <clears throat> and then going deep with prospects right yep. and then trading them away for got you know for certain areas i need to prop up you know each year you know what i mean even in even in very deep leagues i do that i've, I've done that successfully in 12 teamers and 16 teamers and 30 teamers right so Mostly because I, I actually I consider myself a fairly patient person when it comes to winning in fantasy baseball. Like I want to I want to win, I want to win right now. And what I found and you know what I found in leagues in general is that a lot of people in these in startup drafts take uh, more of that approach. Ross, your like build from, you know, build a strong foundation and then build the house like over the next year two you know you know year and a half two years or so until you got a you know a full-blown you know let's use that house now you got two-story house right so yeah. so i i take you know I, I, that which is a, a very valid approach and especially with if, if you're following you know all you listeners and, and watchers out there viewers have whatever we say um if you're following you know scout stat line and you, you are going to know a lot of the deep prospects that come out of nowhere well, you're going to know about them sooner before, you know, sooner than a lot of other people know about them. Right. So it's, it's a very a valid way of doing things. Um, I personally put just a little bit more emphasis on guys that are already there. Right. Not because I think prospects all the time flame out. I mean, I know, I know they do. I know pitching prospects get hurt. I know hitting prospects get hurt or don't work out. And it's just, it's a tough, it's a tough game, right? The guys that are already there are already there. And even the, even, you know, a middling or, or slightly below average MLB player is more useful in a deeper league than any minor leaguer who hasn't thrown out a single pitch or had a single plate appearance right so yeah i don't think i'm i don't think i'm like that's not like a novel idea or anything that's just kind of the side that i fall on most of the time i i'm instead of building the house from the ground up i 
you know, I, I buy a house, uh, and then I flip it and then I redo the inside. And, and then I, you know, <laughs> and, and then That's I a we really really good it. analogy. So, and, and then we just kind of do that every, uh, you know, every other year or so, and you try to stay competitive. And for the most part, I've had pretty good success doing that. Right. I have the advantage of being around baseball people like you guys all the time, right. Or doing podcast, um, or just, I used to be on Twitter all the time. I'm not on Twitter as much anymore. And if you're paying attention to like beat writers and other like Twitter folk who are out watching games, you're going to stumble upon guys like, you know, random, really good players that you would like two years ago, Graham Ashcraft was like, nobody knew who he was. Right. But yeah. Shelly's husband said something about him. Um, his name's Rudy. He said something about him. You know, I think it was two, two and a half years ago and it was in a 30 team league and he was on the waiver wire. And I was like, okay, well, what the hell he's there. I got, I've got an empty spot. Why don't I pick him up? And he's turned, I ended up trading him away, right. In the, in the trade to get Jordan Romano. But like, if you're paying attention yeah, and you're active on the waiver wire and you're active in trades and you're confident doing all of that, both ways can work. You know what I mean? Yep. Oh, absolutely. Tra- yeah. Absolutely agree that there is not one way to do it. We see this in Brian and I's league that, that we've been in for years together. I mean, we have, we, and, and it's well known the the types of people or the people that build the certain types of teams. There's my approach. There's uh-huh. like our buddy Chris's approach, you know, and he's definitely that reload guy. Like he's, he's stocked up on prospects right now. It wouldn't surprise me if by mid season, he's traded them all for major league talent again, you know, cause that's how he builds his team. Some Brian, people are really good at that. You know, I, I get, I'm an emotional player like i know i appreciate you saying that earlier when we started this conversation brian like it's okay to trade these guys away yeah Um, i get but i'm just like any other guy i get guys i'm really excited about like new players or if i've got like a jordan walker on my team you like you you know you're real excited when he comes up and he doesn't you know like he does okay but not great and he's sent back down you're like "Ah." yeah maybe i you know like maybe the hype builds a little bit and i trade away but like i'm attached to these guys no, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll I'll tug at your heartstrings just a little bit. Um, wow. I acquired Trent Grisham, I think, two years ago. <laughs> okay, and, like at his height, <laughs> I man, I yeah. love Trent Grisham. Like it, there was no way he was my number one outfielder, no matter what. <laughs> like he's not going anywhere. I don't care what happens. <laughs> when I had to trade him, like I I think I lost sleep for like a week. <laughs> I, 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 get, I get really attached to my guys. <laughs> I mean, it's hard not to. I mean, we're we're people, you know. They're they're people. I'm rooting for these guys. He was somebody, you know. I remember writing up before the 2020 season, thinking I I really like this guy. And then, especially like, I think when you write about somebody, and you write like you're like you really get it right. Mm-hmm. And maybe it was based a little bit in luck, and maybe mm-hmm. um, maybe he was propped up a little bit by whatever they were doing with the ball um, back sure. then. Sure. Uh, it prob- and it probably was, right? You know, at the time we didn't, you know, I wasn't on, I don't even know if I was on Twitter back then. So like you get news faster about that kind of stuff when you're on yeah. Twitter, but I, I don't think I knew. Um, and so I think in subsequent years, I, you know, I tend, you get, you get a guy right and you're like, oh, you try to steal, like you're loyal, like, like they give a shit about you or anything like they, they don't care. Oh, they do. <laughs> But, oh, <laughs> but it's hard it's hard to let go of that you know well you know and and i think in this business there's a lot of planting your flag and so when you've when you've said like this is the guy he's gonna be the guy <laughs> yeah you know letting go of that is pretty hard there's there's been yeah. some i i'm usually pretty good with with doing that like not getting too attached i tend to try to get attached to the numbers themselves more so yeah. than the player the person of course there's the human element of it that's always hard to detach yourself from but yeah it is. I, I think if you're i think if you're more focused on the reality of the situation it's better for fantasy right for obvious reasons because then you can cut the cord because we're not right about everybody there's there's a few players that it doesn't look like i was right on as breakouts for this year christian santana 
I still like a lot of what I'm seeing in the numbers, but you can't hit under 100 and be a successful player. You know, it's just <laughs> no. not going to happen. So no. like, he's a guy I keep going back to. And then I hear from people on Twitter will remind me of other guys, you know, like I keep getting told about Brandon Walter. Brandon Walter wasn't one of my darlings. That was an STS guy, not one of me personally, but Christian <laughs> Santana was. I thought he was going to be a breakout this year. It didn't work out or hasn't so far. People love to do that, though. I mean, and it's really not like it's not necessary to call us out on all of those. I mean, in the end, like it's just like it's just like hitting, right? Like getting three out of, you know, three hits out of every 10 at bats is mm. like Hall of Fame good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and it's it's hard. Like some people are really good at it, and some people are really bad at it. And if you go back and look at my rankings and I, that I released on opening day, and I'm sure there are guys on there that are misranked, and that's just that's how it goes. Um, that is life, man. That, that's that life. life, exactly. That's life. Two points there. <laughs> I mean, the first one is somebody somebody on Twitter. This just happened today. They they messaged me and they called me an expert, and that's really nice. But I was like, look. I appreciate that. I do, but you know, it's more so that I'm just a guy that really likes baseball and I obsessively research the numbers. Like that's all it really is. I'm not, I, I've never really claimed to be an expert. You know, I'm trying to bring people good information. Absolutely. And that brings me to my second point. And the second point is, while it's, it is important and while I think Scout the Stat Line as an example is trying to be right as much as possible, it's not always about being right. It's more about the velocity of information. How do you respond mm -hmm. when you're not right? Because that's what makes the difference between you being a decent fantasy baseball player versus being a great, in my opinion. Because because everybody's wrong. As you said, the analogy of hitting a baseball was great, you know. If you're right three out of 10 times and you realize you're wrong, having that extra velocity of information and being able to adjust accordingly gives you an advantage because most people are a little slower to adjust. So if you know ahead of time, like this isn't working out with this guy, mm -hmm. his market value is still sky high. I'm going to move him for somebody that I think is going to provide the sort of return that this guy I was hoping would provide. You know, it happens to everybody. You got to adjust. You got to move on. Yeah. That's hard to do. It's really hard to do because it's hard to do. human element. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Especially when you're accustomed to doing, like, let's say you're doing well or you did well in a league before. It's hard to, it's hard to admit that. I mean, it's hard, just hard to admit that you, I mean, you're wrong. It's hard for me to admit that I'm wrong about anything, but I'm a, I'm a proud, I'm a proud guy, but you know, you do it and you move on and you pivot and you find a new angle or you make a trade or you pick somebody new up and it happens. And it feels like it's coming in like as soon as something is hits Twitter, boom, it's in the Discord. Boom, arm That's... injury. Boom, out for the season. Boom, this guy's getting called up. Boom, you know. Yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> to the point of velocity of information I was saying. I mean, first it's like it used to be you got a newspaper. And and for me, I was just looking through, I was pouring through box scores. That's how I did my research when I was younger, you know, and then you get the internet and, and you got better information. You got more of it and it's coming faster. You get to see the box score immediately after it happens, not, not waiting for the next day. And then you got Twitter, you know, Twitter comes out and all of a sudden it's like this vast new, I don't know, aura of energy kind of just flowing right into your fingertips. Well, now you got this discord where it's like, and, and I'm not saying this is the end of the evolutionary, I don't know, spectrum <laughs> or anything like that, but, but you got this discord where it's all filtered, you know, you're, you're, there's zero noise in there. It's all directly for what you would want to know prospects, yeah. you know, news, trade advice, like, boom, you just go there, you get it right away, or you see the most up-to-date information. You're, you're right. You're a hundred percent spot on. It's incredible the amount of information and the and the quality of information that people deliver there. Yep. Yeah. It's huge. I, I love it. I love it. I, I love every second of this, guys. Taylor <laughs> gave us three picks today. And, and these are some really, really good ones. These 
some very fun ones. Taylor's got some great ones. And I, I want to bring the first one up, which would be Nathan Martorella. And Nathan Martorella is in high A affiliate for the San Diego Padres. He's 22 years old. He's six foot one, 224 pounds. I I kind of like the fact that he's a little bit older, kind of a big, yeah. kind of a big beefy boy. Um, like you're saying, six, I mean, six foot one, two twenty-four is I mean, that's a that's a real big boy. Um that's me. That's you. Is that- <laughs> <laughs> probably is about right. I was gonna say I'm probably creeping up to two twenty four these days. <laughs> Regardless, you guys can be whoever you want to be. I don't care your size. It's cool. It's cool with me. Uh, no steals out of this guy, but really, just really hitting the ball extremely well this year. Right, six homers and 140 plate appearances. Um, walk to strikeout ratio is on the walk side, which you don't see like higher on the walk side than the strikeout side, which is something that's just so impressive. I feel like uh, these days, right, with with an emphasis on you know swinging out of your shoes a lot of the time, you know, an OBP bordering on on 400 and a, a 150 WRC plus. Um, just a really, really good, solid approach. You know, I I say, you know, I make a I make reference to you know being a big beefy boy. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I like I love those players. I love the rowdy Teleses of of the world. You know, that kind of he's that kind of feel to him. Just looking at his uh, size and weight. Again, not a knock on him. Uh, I do a, a little, you know, you worry like maybe long-term, maybe we're looking at like kind of a DH type. Um, again, just find kind of limits utility in your fantasy lineup, maybe. Uh, if he hits well enough, who gives a shit about that, right? Doesn't It doesn't really matter. Uh, but in a, kind of an advanced college bat, you know, he's already off off to a very hot start and, and, those numbers it, tell me ross i want to know how he fits i want to know how he fits in the scout in, in sts but like walking you know having that kind of power and then still walking more than you strike out is something that i feel like is exceedingly rare these days and I, i'm going to go look at it in a second while you're talking but i don't feel like he's rostered in very many leagues oh no no yeah, i wouldn't right? i wouldn't imagine so at all uh you're right. It's pretty impressive. And I think he's getting picked up on by STS overall. Great. And pitchers combined, he's coming in at number 108 in the ranking. And he's even getting, nice. dinged. He's even getting dinged a little bit for his sample size because it's so small. Okay. So in our, our rankings, we tend to, to ding until they reach a certain level and okay. it slowly fades out. And so since he's only got what was it, 248 plate appearances, he's getting dinged a little bit. But for him to come in that high is is notable. And I think I'm looking at, like, my my personal formulated rank off of the projections, and he's even higher. So mine is looking a lot more at, like, plate discipline and metrics like that. So, gotcha. so yeah. Does, he, interesting one. does, does yeah. he have a comp, Ross? Leo Gomez. I don't know who that is. I don't know who Leo, Leo Gomez is. <laughs> Leo Gomez. Leo Gomez. Take a look. He does have a comp. 1990 to 1996. So a short professional career. Sure. Uh, he had those 16 home runs, 17 home run. He was a 15 home run hitting, hitting sort of talent. Okay. The period he was there looks like he had a he had a few seasons in there. Um, I'll take it. Yeah, there's yeah, a big I, there's a big leaguer in there somewhere is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I, I like to really. I like to see the the decent average with the the walks and the strikeouts being right next to each other with the power still being there. Uh, yeah. I, I can see a, a solid first baseman in there. I and not be scared about it at all. So Nathan Martorella, guys, 
keep your eyes on him. He's not a go get him. Not a, not a go get him. He he's somebody to keep an eye on. Yeah. But I really like it. it, it that's a name that I didn't know. Like yeah, I like that. I'm trying to think of um because my brain is I'm full of peaches and cream right now. I'm trying to think of the team <laughs> he's playing for right now. Um, and I am about to find it. The Fort Wayne oh, it's Fort Wayne. Yes, yeah, Fort Wayne. For some reason I was thinking it was the Chihuahuas, but it's not. Yes, yeah, Fort Wayne. Thank you. you. Appreciate it. You bet. I like it, guys. Another I like it. Bit to add here, all the all the players that, that Taylor is going to be talking about are Padres. And there's a reason for that. Yeah, they will be Padres. Let's say they will, be. or they won't. They'll get traded away and be great somewhere else. You know who knows? They're I don't care. It doesn't Padres matter. Organization. Me. Yeah, that's. <laughs> they'll, they'll always be Padres in in Taylor's eyes. Man, they will. As I sadly <laughs> this, look this, off into the distance and shed a tear. Yeah. This next one, this one was an eye popping one to me. This was a person that I did not know of. Uh, as soon as Taylor given to me, I researched heavily and I was astounded. Um, this is Graham Pauly. Graham Pauly is with the single A affiliate with Padres, Lake Elsinore Storm, single A affiliate for the Padres, 22 years old. He was drafted in 2022 and round 13, pick 390 out of Duke. He is a third baseman. Guys, holy crap. (laughs) So this year, uh, in 111 at-bats, he's batted 342 with an on-base percentage of 479 and slugged 477. Two home runs. He's got 27 walks, 15 strikeouts. Like, Ross, (laughs) before Taylor gets into this one, how high is... Polly in STS. We love guys with great plate di- discipline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's he's walking almost twice as much as he struck out. He comes in at number 84 overall. And I'm surprised wow. you haven't heard about this guy because I nope. told about him about a week and a half ago. You should have been paying attention. Dang. Check your player highlights, We're man. Shame. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh Graham Polly. I guess I should. I guess I should subscribe. <laughs> you have a free membership, man. I'm teasing, teasing. <laughs> anyway, three forty-two batting average. You, you highlighted that, and four seventy-nine OBP. Those are pretty remarkable numbers. You you have to wonder, and and ten stolen bases already too. So he's got some speed. You have to wonder if he's going to be able to tap into some extra power. He doesn't look like a profile that is a power type player, but you never know. Sometimes that comes a little bit later for these guys too. So, what do, what do you think about Graham Pauly? He's got seven dub. He's got seven doubles too. So, it, like, don't discount that power. That those seven doubles can turn into home runs easily. Does he have a comp, real quick? Oh, um. He does. Uh, another guy that I don't think we're going to know, Paul Blair. Oh, yeah. Paul from, from Wisconsin. <laughs> Paul had quite a bit longer of a career. I thought actually. you were being serious at first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Paul. Paul. From Hello, Wisconsin. Paul. <laughs> no, he's born in Cushing, Oklahoma. Played for the <laughs> Orioles pretty much his whole career looks like a pretty decent ball player i mean you look at this guy's career and he played 16 years in the major leagues touched on 16 years put put up 38 career wins above replacement that's a good career these are like the guys i i love looking up this kind of stuff because you never like you never think about a guy like a paul blair until you're prompted right and to me uh, SDS just prompted. offensive to Paul Blair fans, my friend. Yeah, Baltimore fans are pissed right Man, now. How dare you say something like that? <laughs> this guy's a gold glover. <laughs> One, two, three. Not saying that this is gonna. I mean, we're not living <laughs> the real <next> thing. 
Graham Polly, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gold gloves. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. He's borderline Hall of Fame at this point, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, you I'm serious. Graham Polly, go pick him up. <laughs> you get There's into the, the 40 wins above above replacement, you're getting in that conversation. You know, you yeah. get up to about 50 and is that what he has? Pretty close, 30, 38, 37. Oh, that's impressive. 37. That's yeah. impressive. I don't know much about him. In fact, I, don't I don't know, know shit about him. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. That makes me feel even better about this. I don't have a ton. I don't have a ton to add. This is kind of a um it's like browse the box scores kind of guy that that I uh stumbled upon. And it's and then you go to you know, you go to fan graphs and you're like, oh, okay, that that <laughs> that confirms what I thought I was seeing. Um, in the box and it looks really good i mean something 140 plate appearances and almost a 500 OBP. you, you can't <laughs> ignore that so regardless of whatever whatever else is coming but he's got almost you know almost 50 rbis and runs to go with it and 10 steals it's that's great there you go you 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 combo up martarella with polly and you're set right there there you go hey, hey, it's hey, hey, just... all the padres yeah, just wait. Just wait. Lake Elsinore is hot. I mean, I guess not just wait. He he could start hitting some homers. I know that he's not really the, you know, he may not hit him like uh, like Martorella, but uh, something to keep in mind. It, it gets, the last game I went to go see Lake Elsinore, it gets hot, like 100 plus hot there. So Where, whereabouts is Lake Elsinore? It's about an hour hour 15 north of san diego so about or, okay. or about an hour north of me so still southern california still kind of it's like uh southeast of la kind of out in the you know just out east a little bit he starts hitting home runs and he's like an instant ad in my opinion. yeah he's gonna shoot way up yeah Bro. he's gonna shoot way up again someone to keep an eye on i don't have a whole lot to add context wise I I may in the next month or so I'm going to try to go see a couple Lake Elsinore games so I'll try to get some video and and live looks at those guys. Uh, nice. You know, last year, I think it was last year or maybe the year before I was able to see Robert Hassel and uh, there was Oof. somebody else there too at the time I can't I can't remember who but uh, it's a lot of good players that come through Lake Elsinore so yeah and obviously. Uh, the organization knows that as well because then they start to play well there and then they trade them away. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad, but uh, uh, yeah, some I'll, I'll reiterate again, for the, maybe the third, fourth time. He's definitely somebody worth keeping an eye on. Yeah. Nice. I, I, I love it. Uh, fun little tidbit. You know, I'm sitting here staring at M M I L B.com. Kids got a great smile. Great smile. He's got the look. Hey, that's not worth nothing. I like that. Hey, it's a big deal. He's got the look. You can't smile. You can't make it, man. <laughs> Billy Bean is just so disappointed right now. <laughs> Surprised you guys didn't know that. I know it now. I know it now. <laughs> All right. You got one more. We got one more. And we, me and Ross talked uh, about him a little bit in the off season. It's Aggie Rosario. Aggie Rosario is a third baseman for the San Diego Padres. He is not five seven. He is not one hundred and fifty pounds. He is twenty three years old. He was born in Juan Barron, Dominican Republic. Uh, I say not because that is what they have him listed at, and he's got to be weighing at least 200 pounds. He's a muscular, muscular guy. I don't care how short he is. He, he's a big guy. He's not 150 pounds. Um, a, he, at the very least, he carries himself as, like, he he looks like he's a strong, he's a strong dude. Yeah, he's, he, 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 he's a big guy. Um, so, he he's had a fractured ankle all year. Uh, he hasn't played yet this year, but last year he had 498 at bats. He batted 288, 
at an on base percentage of 368. He hit 22 home runs and 21 stolen bases. His strikeout percentage was a little bit high. It wasn't crazy, but he, he coupled that with 81 walks. So 190, uh, 109 strikeouts in 490 at bats, walked 59 of those. Like it, he, he was doing a really good job just con controlling the strike zone. Um, but all the counting stats are there. It, the guy's a counting stat, stat machine. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say more about this guy because I know we covered him quite a bit. But Ross, did he have a comp? He does have a comp. Before I get there, I think 150 pound Aggie is one home run 2017 Aggie. I think 2022 Aggie is 200 pounds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. He, he does have a historical comp, and this is somebody that you guys might remember. I know I, I remember this guy, Derek Bell. Does that ring a bell? Oh, yeah. Yeah, with the Astros. Yeah. He, was a, he was a good ball player. That was with the early 2000s, uh, late 90s Astros. That was some pretty good ball clubs back then. Um, he, he had an all right career, uh, not – exceptionally long but he did play a good stretch 10 years and yeah, he had some good seasons yeah he had some good seasons 20 home run seasons in there and just a consistent all-around hitter yeah yeah if that's the outcome for eggy i would say that that's probably pretty good yeah that's about what i would say and i think this is i know you guys have uh sounds like you've covered him a little bit this is really just a reminder that he's he is alive and um getting well and i think it's probably worthwhile before any sort of steam picks up on the rosario the eggy rosario train um and put some feelers out there for him um it's triple a i don't i don't i haven't gone back and looked at what kind of competition he was playing against last year to get to have his you know this awesome 2020 season you know 20 yeah. or 22 homers 21 steals and shit 100 and 80 runs in RBIs. That's that's beautiful, right? right. Uh, on his face is beautiful, right? It's just a reminder, though, that he's a good player, good all around player. Um, got a good arm. Has, I would say, a, a decent chance of make a, or being called up at some point at the end of this year, right? Who knows if he does well? I, mean, I wouldn't bank on him being a superstar right away. Uh, or, or at all in general, I'd say but a decent player. Another guy who I think has a decent like chance at being a big leaguer, right? Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yes. And that, then, that's the main thing, right? Yeah, and and, and again, I'm not saying yeah, I'm not saying <laughs> yeah. he's a superstar. I mean, these are he's got superstar numbers. I I think looking at him here, I think I think approach his approach is a little bit more like a, it needs a little bit more work. Let's say. Mm -hmm. um before he hits that kind of i would say baseline or that like average major leaguer uh status but i think it's I think he's capable of it he has a little bit of prospect status maybe, maybe a top five or six guy with the padres right now yeah. somebody i think they think highly of and who has a chance to come up and at some point because it always does on Twitter and everywhere else, right? And maybe, and I'm sure other people are talking about it as well. I, I, I don't know. I don't get around as much as I used to. Um, it doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be create any sort of crazy Rosario hype right now. Is somebody just to start thinking about somebody to check on? Maybe he's out on the wire in a, in a 15 or 16 teamer right now. Somebody to maybe speculate on. And, and, and don't don't discount 2022 because he did the same thing in 2021 in double a which it double a is my point. favorite um uh, uh league to to follow and a had 420 at bats he batted 281 had 30 stolen bases and 12 home runs so like this wasn't a one season where he just exploded. Yeah. Like his double A numbers were really really good too. So I I do I, I completely agree with Taylor. I, I I think this is a go get him, and I think it's going to cost you very 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 cheap 
Um, I think, yeah, a good matter of fact, I you could probably throw a draft pick at this guy and might be able to get it unless the owner is just in love. But you could probably throw a draft pick at this guy. I think he's yeah, I mean, if you have to. He is he's rostered in more leagues than the other guys we've talked about. I think it, it looks like it's twelve percent in fan tracks leagues, but yeah. I mean that still means he's available in almost nine yeah. out of ten leagues. So he might just be there for for nothing. Yeah, this is this was a great person to bring back up again, especially with a broken ankle and he hasn't played yet this year. Um, yeah, guys, go get him. This is a big one. It I mean, is nice to see. Sorry, Ross, go ahead. I was just going to say, especially in a league where, I mean, his prox- he's right on the cusp of yep. the major leagues. If you're in a league where, you know, you need some help at second or third, once he gets that call up, maybe he's a pickup and he's, he fits right in for you. You know, he could be that guy. Yeah. It, it's not going to happen this year. You know, obviously he's got the broken ankle, so he's still coming back from that. He's he's going to rehab all year long. And the Padres are loaded with utility guys. So unless a trade happens, he's not going to play this year with the Padres. Um, next year's probably still going to be pretty tough. You know, you got Kim that bounces around a third, short, and second. So that's going to be a tough one for Aggie to to kind of break into the lineup, too. Is and then Tadis. Did you look that up? Is he out all year? I, I it doesn't gonna, say all year. I, I it, he's on the back six, in the summer. Yeah, yeah, it says 60 day DL. So he, yeah, yeah I mean, he's got to do a re, rehab assignment. I mean, he'll be in the minors all year unless something happens with the Padres lineup, you know, the, where there's an opening. But with Tadis and Kim and Machado, it pretty tough to see him getting a call up. Yeah. And it, 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 maybe he plays some outfield. I didn't look at that. He, he could play some outfield. But I don't see that in there. No, I don't think so. Yeah, so it, that that's a pretty tough infield to break into. It is. He and he may break in as a as a utility guy. I would say there's a little bit better chance with him getting called up somewhere in the second half. Let's say he comes back and and just starts to excel like he has in his last thousand at bats of of minor league ball. He probably has a better chance of breaking out of the rosters somewhere. I mean, we just got news tonight that Manny Machado has a fracture in his hand. He got hit. He got hit last night, right? So, um, oh, I didn't hear that. I didn't worry. Well, we just yeah. had Manny Machado get traded last night in our league, so that's why I think we're probably like, because hmm. we were all like, that was an awful deal. Well, yeah, it's kind of a weird deal where it sounds like originally it was negative. But they then they went back and it, it still hurt and they they did they checked again and it sounds like there's a fracture in his hand. So well, with that, guys, I, I appreciate everybody showing up, everybody listening. This is bats and stats with Ross R. Jensen and my man Tether Case. Thanks, guys. You bet. Mm-hmm.